Uh, Ken? Okay, so I have to start by saying that I was initially reluctant to accept the invitation to be on the panel because my views on immigration are very, very different from the center's. Um, I actually, yeah, I have two kids who are half Dominican and their mother came to this country um, many, many years ago. I actually am not quite sure whether she came legally or not. I know her mother came here illegally. And I am pretty much a believer in, you know, I wouldn't say open borders, but, you know, that my position is, on, is just very, very different from the centers. But I accepted being on the panel for a few reasons. Uh, one was because I have huge respect for my friend Jerry Kammer, and he asked me to. And if Jerry asked me to be on a panel, it would really be something extreme that would keep me from being on the panel. Secondly, I believe in free speech. It's a controversial topic. It's subject to debate. I don't believe that I have a monopoly of wisdom here. And I didn't want to be scared away from addressing a controversial issue because I you know, I've tried not to be in my own work over the last 25 years as a reporter, so I wasn't going to be too cowardly to be on the panel. <clears throat> and I also think that the SPLC helps squelch free debate and free speech because it does, in my view, frequently resort to smears and distortions in, in, in labeling its critics. Um, and lastly, I wanted to be on the panel because I have a great dislike for the SPLC. I do think it is a fraudulent organization headed by a huckster, and I have no regard for the organization. And so I told Jerry that I would be happy to talk about the Southern Poverty Law Center, and I would limit my remarks to the organization itself. <coughs> so let me talk a little bit about um, the center. I, I first heard about the Southern Poverty Law Center in the 1990s, and my initial reaction, like probably most people, was that it was this wonderfully heroic organization, you know, fighting the good fight and, you know, an underdog standing up for, for all the right causes. Um, and at some point along the way, I met an attorney in Atlanta <coughs> named Stephen Bright, who heads an organization called the Southern Center for Human Rights, which is a real, in my view, a real civil rights organization. And I have enormous regard for Steve. And he said, I don't even know how the topic came up, but we started talking about the Southern Poverty Law Center. And he was extremely critical. Like I discovered, many civil rights organizations and leaders were very critical of the center. Um, Steve said that First off, the center had stopped doing most of the core work with which it was associated, this, you know, de anti-death penalty work, um, indigent defense, voting rights, and instead it was primarily a fundraising operation that, you know, it spent most of its time and money sending out fundraising solicitations and raising cash and, and had stopped doing good work. Um, and. One, well, there's one uh, former lawyer from the SPLC who left the organization who said that the SPLC made an enormous amount of money by exploiting black pain and white guilt. Millard Farmer, who is a very renowned anti-death penalty attorney, who is a former associate of Dee's, called Dee's the Jim and Tammy Faye Baker of the Civil Rights Movement. And then he added, this was in an interview with me, though I don't mean to malign Jim and Tammy Faye. <laughs> <coughs> so I discovered that there were a lot of people who I had high regard for in the civil rights movement who thought Dees was a fraud. And so I started looking into the organization. And the first thing I found was this fabulous, groundbreaking series in the Montgomery Advertiser, which is in the re Jerry's report. But just a couple of highlights. I mean, what, what, the, what this what the advertiser revealed was that, again, the, the center had stopped doing most of this important work that it, it had done at the outset. Um, and it's reported that black attorneys who worked at the center frequently felt discriminated against. It quoted Harvard Law Professor Charles Ogletree saying, quote, my students have come back with disappointing experiences. It's particularly disappointing to encounter racism at a civil rights organization. That it used 
its money from all of this fundraising to pay very, very large salaries to Morris Dees and other heads of the organization and to pile up a huge endowment. And that even groups that monitored charities were extremely critical of the, of the law center. Um, it said that uh, some of these groups concluded that donors to the Southern Poverty Law Center had no idea of uh, how much money it had and were duped into thinking that it was tottering on the brink of financial disaster. And that people in Montgomery often referred to its lavish headquarters as the Poverty Palace.